Joe, as we shared last week, when you and I were here on a Tuesday recap in the end of week number three around the NFL, as we get done with one week, we look forward to the next. And that means practice reports and injury updates from the weekend that was as you project the days to come. And the update around Christian McCaffrey was that he was not even going to be stateside. He was going to fly to Germany to see a specialist to deal with the Achilles tendonitis that had him placed on IR for the San Francisco 49ers. Well, a further update last night from ESPN's Adam Schefter is that he is dealing with Achilles tendonitis not just in one leg, but in both legs. So maybe he's going to Germany to get answers on this, but there does not seem to be an end in sight for Christian McCaffrey. The IR stint that is up to four weeks could be continued beyond. Now, Jordan Mason has been fine. The Niners handled business as a double-digit favorite against the Patriots on Sunday to improve to an even 500, 2-2. Two and two. But when you're losing the best offensive player in the National Football League, at least he won Offensive <laughs> Player of the Year a season ago, it's never a good sign, and it's never a good sign when uncertainty clouds the situation. Yeah, so it's it's kind of crazy how this worked out, right? It's been bothering his one leg for a while, and because of that, he's been, unbeknownst to him, overusing the other leg to compensate for the pain in, in the right leg, and now he's created tendonitis in both of them, but it still is the only uh, one leg that seems to be bothering him. But here's the other problem they keep saying. There's nothing you could do except rest this. That's the only treatment. If there's no tears yeah. and nothing requires surgery, then the only thing that is going to help this is basically uh, resting it and not playing NFL football. So who knows, Ben, when he's coming back at this point and if it's worth it. Because if he comes back and he pulls it, what? then what? We're in the next year uh, before we can see I mean, him again? Yeah, that's the fear, right? Anything that could lead to a rupture of the Achilles. Yep. I'm not a doctor. I don't know how tendons necessarily work. If it's overextended, does it give you a higher probability of rupturing the entire thing, which sidelines you forever? And although Christian McCaffrey is a unicorn, he's getting up there just a little bit as a running back. Yep. How detrimental would that be? I think worth it is the conversation I am sure they are having internally with the mm -hmm. 49ers. I'm sure CMC is debating with his team, with the organization. It's just not a good, good story for San Francisco at this moment. And again, Jordan Mason has been really, really solid, 100-plus in three of the four games for San Fran this year. Overall, Joe, the 49ers still remain the favorites to win an NFC championship despite an uneasy start at 2-2. Two and two. They're plus 380. We have seen this number be closer to two and a half bucks throughout this season already, but still plus 380. They're nearly two dollars in front of a Detroit team that we just sung the praises for a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. Plus 550 for the Lions, second best price. Philadelphia two and two, plus 650, and the undefeated Minnesota Vikings, the best record in the NFC at plus 750. Knowing that there is some uncertainty around the 49ers. Yes, they looked a lot healthier on Sunday against New England. Debo Samuel, George Kittle, back for that offense as well. Joe, do you believe you can buy in the Niners' price at this time? No, I don't, unfortunately. And that's, uh, that's the scary part. That was part of the reason why I actually yeah. made them one of my survivor picks this week, because... I don't know what this is going to be. Yeah. We said it last week, Ben. Wh where? Why is he going to Germany? There's something else going on here. And I don't think the 49ers at any point thought there was a possibility they'd have to run the tables this year without McCaffrey in uniform and on the field here. And that is yeah. becoming, yeah. it sounds like, a very big reality to them right now. We're talking about what? The offensive player of the year? We're, we're, we're not yep. talking about a dude you can just throw different guys in there and be like, oh, he's easy to replace. Yeah. He's not easy to replace here. And that means they become a little less potent in a very crowded NFC right now. So I, I'm not optimistic with the 49ers until they can figure out what's going on with McCaffrey.
as a collective, we have diminished the value of a running back. You Mm -hmm. would think that's even more demeaned in a type of offensive scheme like Kyle Shanahan. Heck, we did the same to Brock Purdy, the most important player on the field at the QB spot because of Shanahan's scheme and all the talent elsewhere. But Christian McCaffrey is a unique individual in terms of what he presents when he is healthy. And frankly, since he got traded to San Francisco, he had been pretty fully healthy for the 49ers. Not the case as of this moment. San Fran back in Santa Clara after a couple of road games. They're a a seven-and-a-half-point home favorite against the Arizona Cardinals. They were home on Sunday as well, but a seven and a half point favorite against the Cardinals, a good cover team as an underdog. I think that game is slightly more competitive. Joe, also from ESPN's Adam Schefter, the ultimate insider, perhaps, if you saw those reports yesterday, the Chiefs still awaiting official confirmation on the extent of Rasheed Rice's knee injury. We had Dr. David Chow on the show yesterday. He pretty much told us that based on video, it looks to be a torn ACL. And there's a test you do right there on the field before x-rays, before MRIs, which of of course give you that official confirmation and the extent of the injury that you can pretty much tell 95% of the time if it is a torn ACL. He feels pretty confident I believe the Chiefs are just delaying the inevitable, which they have every right to do. Even if it's not a torn ACL, I don't think we see Rasheed Rice until the very late portions of this season for KC. Yeah, and well, and now here comes the problem. You you also know you're not seeing Isaiah Pacheco or Marquise Brown, who are both on injured reserve and in all likelihood not going to be seen for the rest of at least this year. Uh, so no doubt. You, you gotta, they got to start making, figuring out what's going on. Do they have enough in the building here, Ben, to, uh, to compensate? You can lose one of those guys, maybe even two, but three of those guys, they got a problem in Kansas City. Joe, we'll talk about the top of the Super Bowl odds because both of those teams, San Francisco we just discussed, and Kansas City dealing with grave injury concerns in the opening month. To change our outlook, find out next significant and i mean incredibly significant injury concern for the two super bowl favorites and the two teams that are favored to win their conference crown after the opening month of this season san francisco is two and two kansas city is one of the two teams that remains unbeaten after only four weeks at four and oh the chiefs joe five to one favorite to win super bowl 59 san francisco the team that lost to kansas city in super bowl 58 just a dollar and a half behind we talked about the issues with christian mccaffrey the uncertainty surrounding the achilles tendonitis now in both legs the chiefs are trying to tell us there is still some uncertainty into the true extent of Rasheed Rice's injury but we expect him to miss a significant amount of time if not the entirety of the rest of this season so you could have Rasheed Rice out for the year Isaiah Pacheco out for most of this season same story for an offseason acquisition in Hollywood Brown and yet we give the Chiefs the benefit of the doubt and rightfully so look at the wideout room last year it wasn't good the Chiefs had the worst offense they had under Patrick Mahomes as the starting quarterback They still won their second consecutive Super Bowl. Do the Chiefs have enough in the tank to make that the case two straight times to win a Super Bowl as the first team to ever win it three years in a row? That's the problem. And listen, of of the two teams, Kansas City deserves the benefit of the doubt. And I have long said this, uh, Ben, and a big believer of it. uh, Receivers don't make quarterbacks. Quarterbacks make receivers and we have uh evidence of that time and time again i mean don't look any further than tom brady how many hall of fame wide receivers uh were were creating great opportunities he played with one randy moss and they didn't win uh the super bowl Mm -hmm. so this is one of these situations from far to aaron Rodgers. uh you give mahomes the benefit of the doubt because he's good enough to take probably guys off the street and make them look real good. I do think you better start investing in a lot of props on Worthy moving forward because I do think he's going to get a whole lot of looks here. Uh, And Kelsey, it looks like, is starting to warm up here a little bit. I trust that Kansas City will figure it out and be okay with all those injuries, more so than I am with the 49ers right now. 
Yeah, you got to give the Chiefs the benefit of the doubt, and they have the pedigree and the experience, even with a cast and crew that is slightly inferior to our expectations that they have figured it out before. The rookie Xavier Worthy will be expected to do a ton. Justin Watson now becomes the number two wide receiver. Sky Moore, man, if that guy's got anything, we will find yeah. out right now. But we would expect a couple of acquisitions, whatever that looks like, for Brent Beach and that KC front office. Let's go to some other injury news. Twice in a span of four plays on Sunday, Joe, was Anthony Richardson knocked out of Indy's first win of the year over Pittsburgh. You put in the steady veteran presence of Joe Flacco, you are going to deliver for Indianapolis. He is listed AR as day-to-day with both abdomen and hip injuries, but still optimistic he could play on Sunday as the Colts will play on the road in a divisional duel in Duval County against Jacksonville. Right now, Indy listed as a a two-and-a-half point underdog. Joe, do you believe Anthony Richardson plays? And if so, does that move the number at all in Jacksonville on Sunday? Well, it didn't look like uh, it moved much when Flacco uh, came in. But again, how, uh, you know, can he hold down the fort long enough? I believe they're going to try to do whatever they can to try to get him uh, back on the field, that being uh, Richardson, because they clearly need to get him the experience and the reps, and they got to yeah. figure out. I mean, the kid's got nothing but talent. But if he's going to be on the sideline or he's going to continue to be an injury concern, they need to figure that out sooner rather than later. But I think Flacco is more than yeah. capable with that uh, with the offense uh, to be able to keep the steady the ship, like you said earlier with Tennessee. I think he can steady yeah. the ship long enough for them to figure it out, and then we're going to have to make a decision if uh, if he can't come back as to whether or not we think Flacco can do what he did in Cleveland last year. It's what Flacco has done. It's what Indianapolis had with Gardner Minshew a year ago yep. but joe is right you want to see if anthony richardson who you expended a fourth overall pick on in 2023 yep. is your franchise quarterback first three weeks not great only qb that had started a game with a completion percentage sub 50 50 percent but he was really good early on Sunday. Let a touchdown drive. Hat was three of four for 71 yards through the air, 24 more on the ground, and had Indianapolis inside Pittsburgh's 10-yard line before he was banged up and out of the game. You can rely on Joe Flacco, but I think you'll want Anthony Richardson to be under center. 